So I'm going to talk about um, time and date in Elixir. Uh, but first, there's a practical announcement about the Conference Center. Um, so I th yeah, I think it's a fun, it's a fun name. Um, anyway, um, I posted this uh, when I found out I was going here and to talk about date and time, and apparently something that every time I, I, I talk about it to people, people say they hate it, and um, you know, I must be a masochist, or I don't know. Um, but anyway, I like it, I think it's interesting, and um, once you get going with it, kind of unravel some of the, the secrets or the traps, um, it, can be, it can be kind of interesting, actually. So hopefully by the end of this talk, uh, you will, uh, you will uh, feel um, enlightened and, and think it's more fun to work with in time. So um, my name is Lau, uh, I'm a software developer. Uh, I'm from, originally from Denmark, but now I live in Uruguay. Uh, I have a blog, and I'm on Twitter and GitHub. On uh, IRC, my nickname is LAUT. Um, and I have this website where I plan to put on some videos also about the same subject, about um, time and date. Um, so there's a lot of people that have problems with date and time. It's not just, um, um, you know, Anyone's, you have um, Apple that had a bug, you had Microsoft that had a bug, and you had Twitter, and you have, um, of course, Y2K, the big one, where apparently they, they were spent $300 billion trying to control that. So um, in the case of Twitter, someone decided to, uh, to uh, make their own uh, timestamp formatting, and they got something wrong. So uh, I made some uh, time zone libraries and date and time libraries for Elixir. And um, one of the points is um, sometimes it's good to use a library for these things and make things easier instead of trying to make your own, like these guys said. Um, so first, uh, a very short history of, of timekeeping. Uh, so before we had modern clocks, we, you know, people uh, lived in caves, and what, what did they have to do? They didn't have a, uh, a watch, so they used, of course, the sun. Um, but not that sun, the, this one. So you had solar clocks, and uh, for a long time, uh, this, the day has been divided to two parts of 12. So basically, you looked at the sun when the sun was in the middle of the sky. Uh, that's the middle of the day. Um, so it used to be that you had towns. Each town had their own time. Uh, so 12 o'clock in one town, and maybe not so far away, you had another town. Uh, 12 o'clock there would not be at the same point in time. So then you had uh, railways, and it wasn't very practical. So in, in Greenwich in England, um, they, they measured time to be uh, in a certain, uh, they measured time in a certain way, and then all the towns would coordinate with Greenwich. So that means that before you had, if you can see the, the wide, wide line here, that's the middle of the day. Um, and then with uh, standard time, uh, 12 o'clock is not going to be exactly middle of the day because you're going to have a town that's slightly east or west. Um, but it makes things easier to communicate. So uh, probably a lot of you have seen GMT being used. Um, and in many standards, you still talk about GMT, but it's really deprecated now. Instead, there's uh, universal time. And there's all kinds of sub parts of universal time, but we're only going to care about um, two of them, uh, UT1 and UTC. So UT1 is basically a modern GMT where you measure um, basically space, uh, quasars compared to Earth and how things move. So you're going to have the same basic effect as you did with solar clocks. You, you know, 12 o'clock 
um, the sun is going to be in the middle of the sky. Um, but that's not what we use today as the official time. The official time is UTC. But first, I'm going to talk about um, TAI, which is International um, Atomic Time. And it's like the, the abbreviation is reversed because it's French. And it, that's kind of where, in somewhere in Paris, they, that's like the official um, time where they, they decide what time is. So one second is a, a certain amount of um, periods of radiation of uh, the cesium atom. So that is one second. So you have, um, the thing is though, you don't know how the Earth is going to rotate. So if you just keep that as one second and use that, eventually, the, because the, the Earth is slowing down, um, you're going to be out of sync with the sun. So if you keep going just with Thai, eventually you're going to have, uh, you know, 12 o'clock being, um, you know, the middle of the night. Um, like noon is going to be middle of the night. So uh, you correct that with leap seconds. So t uh, you see it's basically Thai minus leap seconds. So that this is another way to demonstrate. We have like atoms, which are... Um, constant, um, and then you have the differences in space, and you kind of use that to correct that. So, so with this, um, you you ha you have UTC being within one second of UT1. So um, basically, uh, GMT and UTC are always going to be within uh, like a second of each other. So in all practical terms, it you could you could treat it as the same as a lot of people do, um, but this is just the the you know explanation the conceptual explanation of of the differences. So when you look at you look at the the time on the wall, you have a, a clock. You look at your watch. Like here, it's um, almost two o'clock. Um, how how is that actually? How is that defined? How does that all add up? So in the bottom, you have tie. You add leap seconds. You get UDC. And then um, over here, if you use UTC, um, the, the, you know, the day would change in the afternoon, maybe. It's, it's not very practical, so you have time zone offsets. And then you have standard time. On top of that, then you have, um, you have the offset to get wall time. Uh, right now, we have summer time, so that's one hour. Um, so all of these things in green can change. So, so you can see that uh, leap seconds, there's been a bunch of them. They come maybe on average once every 18 months. Uh, but it's just one second, it'll just last for, um, for one second. Uh, so, and then you have, um, you have the rules for the, the UTC offset. Um, and they, around the world, they can change uh, once in a while too. And then you have the standard offset for daylight saving time, also known as summer time. And um, basically, the way that it is now is you know as long as the rules keeps, keep being the same, they're going to change twice a year, right? Um, but even the rules can change. So all these things you have to keep in mind that all these green things, they can, they can change and then you know, you're going to have a, a repeated uh, amount of time or a skipped amount of time. So this is kind of the, the, um, the variability that you can experience, and that's one of the reasons why people like to use UDC to many things, because it's pretty stable, except for, for leap seconds. So now it's time for uh, a live demo of some Elixir code. So I, I made this clock, and... Um, yeah, there's a disclaimer that if there's any uh, police from Texas here, it's, it's, it's just a clock. Um, um, and basically, this, this, is, this, is what I, um, this is what I showed you before uh, live. So, so you can see how it all adds up. Uh, I haven't seen this before, uh, but I thought it would be interesting to, to see how, like this, this is what your wall time actually is. It's based on all these things. And, um, and yeah, so, so if any of these things in green change, your wall time is going to change. 
So uh, with a lot, of, a lot of issues you can have with date and time comes from that. So let's continue with this. Um, so you can have a wall time skip or a wall time repeat. Every time one of these things that you're doing green change, uh, you're, you're either going to have a skip or a repeat. So here, first you have the skip. There's an example of, um, in, in spring. If you have daylight saving times, uh, you're going to have an hour to be skipped. So let's say 2 o'clock, 2, 10, 2, 15. It doesn't exist simply. It doesn't exist in wall time. And then for autumn or fall, um, you're going to have it be repeated. So if I tell you the time is you know, 2.30 on this date, if, if that's the date where you're going to go back on winter time, uh, you, ha uh, you, have, you have two of them. So to be, know, so to be sure in UTC what time it is, uh, you need to tell, you, know, you need to say what, 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 which one is it. It's the first one or the second one. Um, so I think to keep in mind again is this is uh, with, with uh, daylight saving time, you know it's going to happen every year. This is going to happen as long as the rules stay the same. Uh, but it can also happen if the, like basically the UTC offset change. Um, and even with, uh, with the same thing with, with, um, with UTC and leap seconds. You're gonna, that's just going to be though for, for one second. Um, so the, the fact of the matter is today we have these uh, neat operating systems and, and computers that can do a lot of things, but they don't fully support UTC. Uh, they they can't tell you what, um, what the time is in UTC. Uh, for instance, this is a screenshot from a U.S. government website. So this, this is a valid time. Th this, is, this is, you know, the time in society, the official time the legal time, um, and basically all around the world, the time is based on UTC, uh, pretty much e everywhere. So um, if you have some kind of validation where you say you, your seconds can be, be between zero and 59, um, that's basically not correct. But the computers don't support that, and you, they, they can't tell you when a leap second ha happens, either they're gonna repeat that leap second and tell you it's uh, you know 59, 59 twice, or they're just gonna like uh, make time a bit slower. So what what does that mean? It means your computer does not fully support the official time used in society, which is um, I can I think it's kind of sad. Um, I would like to be able to access like to to have my computer tell me what the time is. Um, so some people are gonna have issues with that. Um, but I'm not, I'm, I'm not going to talk so much more about leap seconds because a bigger issue is, uh, for instance, daylight saving time or time zones in general. Because as, as this chart shows you, if you're going to be wrong about leap seconds, it's just going to be for one second uh, once every 18 months. Uh, but if you're wrong about, let's say, daylight saving time, uh, it could be an hour and you're going to be wrong for half a year maybe, roughly, um, which is a lot longer. So um, time zones, they're not just UTC offset. They're more than 24 time zones. Um, you know, they're, 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 what is a time zone? There's a lot of definitions. The one other thing is practical um, to use is basically um, every place has a time zone where, uh, where you have a certain set of rules. So this is based on this uh, official uh, TC data um, database where you have a zone where the rules have been this um, uh, certain rules have been in a certain way since the, um, since 1970. Some, sometimes it goes back longer than that. Um, so another another way to think about time zones is something like this. So can anyone uh, tell me what this stands for? Yeah, so anyone that said uh, Cuba standard time would be correct, and central standard time is also correct. But basically, the, the point is that these are not unique identifiers for a time zone. Um, so it, they're used a lot in, in the US, and 
they're, uh, you know, they're, I would use them to display things. Let's say you have to display this. I would, do, I would display that to people and send the data along to any web service or any person that want to see it on a website. But don't base your calculations on this. So what you want to do instead is use these kinds of identifiers. Um, so where, where do these come from? They, they come from this Olson database. Uh, and now it's managed by yana.org. Um, that they also manage DNS for the internet. So it's kind of an open source thing. Um, and anytime you want to do something with time zones, you want to know about daylight saving time, you want to consult this database. Uh, because, you know, that, that's, they already did all this work and it's just there for you. Um, so what to remember here is that wall time is not stable and uniform and you want to consult the, the time zone database. So in Elixir, um, I made this library, TSET data, that basically makes all this data available. It's, as you can see here, it's, uh, it's like text files. So, so this library parses that and makes it available. And before it was compiled into a module, uh, it worked a bit like how Elixir handles uh, Unicode in that you have all these text files and then you compile functions. So the compiled functions become kind of hard-coded data that you can access. So it's, it's really fast. Uh, but there were some problems. Um, one of them was if you had less than two gigabytes of memory, it could crash when you did the compilation because it was very intensive. I mean, after compilation, was, it was very efficient and fast, but um, it also took a, a bunch of time. Um, to, to do the, to compile it. And then another problem is since it's, it's compiled, you, um, you would have to, whenever the data updates, you would have to compile it again. So the maintainer had to find out about the new data, that's yours truly. And then I would have to uh, download the new data. And I had to release a new version, bump the version number. Uh, and basically, the software would not change. It would just change the text files that would ship with the, with the package. And um, then users of the library had to find out about it. They had to upgrade to the new version. And they would have to <laughs> recompile it. So that's an, a lot of time that uh, would be spent by various people around the world for something that uh, really the computers could do for us. Um, so, so when does anyone have a guess of when the last time the, the this data was updated? So actually, last night I found I got an email. That's how it works. That a new version came out, and usually, usually I would. Um, so the answer is last year was ten times, um, 2014. Um, so um, I found out about that and. Before, with the old version, I would, uh, you know, release a new version. But now there's uh, there's another version. So instead, where I don't have to do this. So instead, I spend time with this, playing with this animation for the in Keynote. So it does this cool thing. <laughs> so th this this is a, a video I did uh, like a week ago. So it's going to show uh, how it, it works now. So it's like with the previous versions, and the new one is called G. So first going to show, I'm going to start this and type in, um, type in a command to show me the current version. And then, let's see here. It's, so it's 2015E. Then it checks if there's a new version. And basically now it's already done. Like it took less than four seconds. Um, now you have the new version. So if anyone is using this in production, you can go and check. You should probably have the, the newest version, which is now G. Um, so the cool thing about this, it's, it's used with edge tables. And you don't have the problems of, of all the memory necessary to compile it. And basically, it's all automatic. You don't have to worry about it. You just have the newest data available at all times. Uh, whereas, uh, for instance, I have a friend in. Uh, who was in, in Chile, where he, where he lives. And um, he, uh, he had some problems. He was on a flight there, and they, they had changed their rules. 
and basically his his Mac couldn't tell him the right time. A lot of these uh, operating systems or people that run software they they don't update it uh, immediately. Sometimes it takes months, so it's um, it gets out of date. But if if they do something like this, it would just basically work. Um, so why do people have a have a lot of problems. I think one problem is that the libraries um, are not very, they don't encourage you to do the right thing, they actually do the opposite. Um, I don't think they, the people who make these libraries intend to do this, but I think it's basically because you had, uh, you know, in C, the standard way to get time, for instance, is local time, and then people just do things in a certain way, they make a new language, and then they do what the language before them did. Um, so I'm gonna list some of, the, some of the problems. For instance, a lot of time you don't have access to this time zone data because it's, it can be problematic to uh, ship it with a standard library if you're just gonna ship the data with it. Um, so that's one problem. I'm gonna come back to this later. Then treating everything as the same type, as the, as the same type. So, for instance, this. Uh, what would you call call this? Time, time right? Uh, me too. Uh, and this, what do we call this? That's right. And this is uh, date time. This is this is what uh, this is how uh, Postgres or MySQL works. For instance, this is kind of the in, in databases. That's. Uh, the basic way it's defined. But JavaScript, for instance, um, for JavaScript, you know, let's say you want a date in JavaScript, um, and you tell it this, and it says, okay, I have a date, but it also added some time and a time zone, uh, and that's not really what you want all the time. Because imagine if you take this and you save this, and then someone says, oh, this is, uh, this is a, you know, a daytime in a certain place, in a certain time zone, and maybe you say, oh, in GMT, the, it is this time, and then you take just a date, but maybe that's another date. So the date changes, because you have all this extra information you didn't even want in the first place, and it confuses the developers. The next person that's gonna see it, uh, it's gonna confuse them. Um, so basically, that's not a good idea. Another thing here, another problem is, uh, let's say you provide this data, and you didn't provide a year, so uh, probably what you would want is an error that says you didn't provide a year, I can't give you a date, but JavaScript is very helpful and it just you know, adds one for you. So like 2001, why not, you know? I don't know, I, I don't think it's, it's a very good design, but that's, that's kind of seems normal, so I, I'm, you know, it's no wonder that people hate date and time when you have this kind of design. Um, so the, you know, some these are some some pointers. Only save the information you know. Um, if you have, if some uh, some user tells you just a date, just save the date and don't save time or time zone. Uh, it's good to have a lot of information. Uh, I mean, if 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 you have it and and it makes sense, save save what you have, but don't save more, don't save less. Um, and errors are good. This kind of ties into how Elixir works, right? If you, if you have something bad, it's good to let it crash and you know, start over instead of continuing and just have bad data. If you have you know, bad data in, you're probably gonna have bad, bad data out as well. And explicitness is good. Um, and guessing is dangerous and, and basically making things up. If you make up data that you don't have, you, know, you could run into trouble. So here's a tip of finding uh, bugs in, in, in um, Erlang code. I ran this, and then I found a bug in Elixir, and, uh, and now it's fixed. Uh, Jose fixed it, and now, before there was a big problem with, uh, with the compilation that during, for instance, uh, daylight saving uh, switchover, you could have problems where it would save a daytime in local time, and then you know if the time change, it could be you change your time zone because you travel. You go if you're not from Texas, maybe another time so you travel here, and then you change your your uh, time zone, and then 
it checks, you know, should I recompile this? I know it's all good. Um, but really, it's, it was just that the, the local time changed. So basically, uh, the point is never use local time on a server. Like, you don't, and the one thing is, you know, the, the, the repeat of, uh, or the skipping of, of the wall time. Uh, but it's more than that. It's because why would you even want to know what the local time of the server is? It's, it's been used kind of as, as a poor man's, uh, you know, time zone conversion. But that, that's, that's not the way to go. Probably your server should run UTC anyway. Um, so it, it, because it's an unspecified global mutable variable. <laughs> I have, I have my, in my blog, um, I, I, so I live in Uruguay. And then I would travel to, to, on vacation to Denmark. And, and then I would try to post a new blog post. And then I uh, use Jekyll, and it would change the URLs because they have dates in them. And for some reason, Jekyll uses my local daytime for no reason. Um, so it only makes sense if you want to display what the time is right now, or if you, basically, if you're doing a desktop app, that's you could you can consider using it. But otherwise, don't 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 do that. Um, you can get the current time in UTC, and then you can you convert it. Um, so save the information you know, don't invent things, use the correct type, and yeah, don't use the local time and server. But when you do work with local time, when people tell you this is what the time is at me, I'm going to schedule a meet meeting in this time zone, use that. Save the name of the time zone and save the, the time they tell you. Um, but when you work with the server or the files, if you say this happened right now, an event happened, use UTC. So I'm quickly going to go through, it's not so much time, I'm going to go through um, the calendar library. So you can provide uh, like a tuple with a date, and you get a struct, and it validates it. So you provide something wrong, it gives you errors, which is good. And then there's all kinds of functions where you can, uh, it can tell you the, the day of the week, for instance. And um, time, a similar thing. It will give you errors if you provide something wrong, and it can tell you for instance, AM and PM. I'm used to the 24-hour system, but this thing can tell me this. It's neat. Um, need daytime. So that's basically if if you have some, if you don't have a time zone, uh, don't invent one. You want to use you want to use this. Like if you can get a time zone, that's good. But if you don't have that data, you want to use this this type. Um, again, it checks if you put in something invalid. Then you have the daytime type, and that, that has a time zone. So you have to specify what time zone it is. So this time uh, is valid for London, so it says OK. But if you put exactly the same t uh, time and date in for, for Copenhagen, it's invalid. Why is this? This be this because you have the, the skip where that didn't happen. You went from winter time to summer time, and it doesn't exist. So um, basically, you need if you even let's say you build something only for one time zone for Copenhagen. You don't care about any other time zone. You don't care about UTC or converting things. Basically, if you want to validate is this a valid time, you need the time zone library, even though you just have one time zone. So a good thing is even if you do that, you can you know save this identifier in a config file, something a database, and and that's what you want to use. Then it can also be ambiguous. And again, it, it tells you that. And then you can choose one. You can see in green how they're different. Uh, the standard offset is basically you know, the one hour. Um, and then you can get the time right now for a certain time zone. And it will actually ask the database or ask the server, what is the time in, in UTC? And it will convert that. Uh, and then you can do all kinds of stuff. You can shift it to another time zone, and then you can advance it. And then you can get you can get some kind of uh, you know identify you can use in your API. You know, um, like if Twitter has had been doing that, they wouldn't have this this problem. Then you have protocols. A really cool um, cool thing about Elixir. So you can you can uh, you know pass a date. But then you can also just pass a, a tuple directly. And using the protocols, it will convert it to, to a date. And you can even use that with everything that has a date. So that's why it says contains date, contains time, and so on. Um, 
so you can have a date time and you pass that on you see the the last part here uh, you parse this thing you get from some HTTP source and uh, you have this date time and it can tell you it's Saturday um, so it goes from date time to date um, it's a bit like how enum works in different types it's pretty cool um, so the ties protect you from errors if you have a naive date time, that, that means you don't have, you don't know what the what the time zone is. So instead of the the library just saying, okay, uh, I'm just gonna you know assume you that's UTC, uh, because you didn't tell it upfront what the time zone is. It's like unless you tell me that it's UTC, I can't do it. Um, so that again, that's a good thing. You know, you know, may, maybe you're gonna have, it's more complicated to do things so they work right upfront, but. Uh, these kind of things are going to help you down the road. Um, and again, with, with uh, this string formatting, if you, um, if you want to tell what the time is and you only provide a date, like in, in the second example, it will throw an error. Because you can see it says, protocol contains time is not implemented for date, which is logical. Um, and it even has uh, support for some other languages. This, these are the ones I put in. If, if anyone knows uh, some other language, please do a pull request or an issue or something. And, and I'd like to have, it would be cool to have more languages there. Another package is Phoenix Calendar that is very small. It basically just means you can, um, you can put um, any of these types, and it will, you won't get uh, some errors about protocol implemented. Um, then you have to uh, interact with um, Ecto. There's a, a package called Collecto. Um, so if you have these types, you can change them out for this. And then all this stuff you do, let's say you, you use calendar to parse something, um, you can actually put that into, you can put that into your, your uh, Ecto models. So um, let's say you have some daytime, and you can shift that daytime, and you can use the, the uh, formatting functions. And also, if you if you have a calendar type, you can use that in your queries. In this case, you have to cast as it is now. You have to cast it with the collector you see in the in the third line. Okay, um, yeah, I'm, I'm repeating this a lot. Um, you can ask for, for, the, for a local time. Like if you have an identifier, as I showed before, you can, you can ask calendar, and it will use UTC and then convert it using the data. And, and let users use their own time. Like you can't, no one's gonna use UTC except a very few specialized areas like pilots use it. By the way, I think programmers should be used to using UTC just like pilot, do. like it's our job and if you don't want to have bugs, it's, it's not too hard uh, to, to, to like tell like what the time is in UTC. I mean, some sysadmins, they don't want to use it because they wanna, don't want to have their servers run UTC because they like to have, you know, they can look at their watch and it's the same. But then on the other hand, they're gonna have, you know, Terrible things might happen because of that. So, yeah. So, final things here: don't guess and use the library. Some people they say, "Oh, I don't want to add a lot of dependencies to my code." Um, so, yeah. I mean, you could do everything that a library does, and you could write that yourself. But if you don't, I mean, if you don't do that, you 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 know, you're, you're going to be in trouble. Um, so I would recommend to use the libraries or be basically rewrite what's already been written uh, and make sure you've done it correctly. Um, so yeah. Thank you.